stuff over the last few days, there is a consistent way all the way from the um, Slave to the Rhythm stuff up to the Billie Eilish Bond theme, this way of taking an orchestra and not filtering it and making it little or whatever, it still sounds absolutely gigantic, but it's so far behind what you're supposed to be focusing on that it takes no space away from anything else. And I would think, I mean, especially something like the Billie Eilish song where she's not, she sings out more on that song than I've ever heard her sing out. And it's only for about two bars. You know, yeah. it's her very quiet thing. And usually that would take up a gigantic amount of space and it would be hard to fit an orchestra in there. And it sounds effortless. It's amazing. So you do that, it innately. Oh, but that that is a whole, I got to tell you, that Billie Eilish <laughs> well, song. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a whole story there. Well, I mean, we can just go straight there and then jump back if you want, because we're talking about that sort of thing, because whatever you uh, well, want to well, do, we don't have to go you on You know, order. it's a funny one, because it, it Hans asked me, I, I, I have to cut through it, because it's a long, drawn-out story. We have, we have another seven I, hours, if you want. Uh, you know. I haven't, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> Not my bladder. He, he, um, we can take a break. asked me to... <laughs> okay at the moment asked me to produce the uh song for the bond film that he'd been asked to do he asked me in the weirdest way i can't remember what it was he said do you like aston martins or something you know, <laughs> some cryptic thing right but right. at any rate with all the money uh, you're gonna make yeah <laughs> but no i think he was alluding to bond you know oh right I, right okay you know, that was that was the thing um he, he said, come down. He was in London. I've got the song to play you. And he played me the song. So they'd chosen the it... song at this point? No. Oh, right. No. They were interested in the song. That was the deal with the Billie Eilish song. They were interested in it, but they had other contenders. And not everyone was convinced. And the show is basically run by Barbara Broccoli. Yeah who was more interested, but not convinced. And, and he played it to me. And the first time I heard it, um, I thought it was good. I, you know, I didn't go, oh my God. I thought it was good. That, I don't know what reaction that is, but you know, the first time I hear any, I'm not gonna go, oh, they've knocked it out of the park or whatever corny thing <laughs> someone would say. I had to hear things a few times. It sounded good. And uh, he said, what do you think? And I said to him, it's a complete no-brainer. It's obvious it should be this. And he goes, why? Uh, again, this is probably selective memory. This is my memory. Uh, because it's Billie Eilish. And Billie Eilish is the zeitgeist. It, she, it has to be Billie Eilish. She has to do it. It's brilliant. Yeah. Her doing the Bond theme. You know, the song... Song's good. Billie Eilish, no brainer. Absolutely. And um and so then I met up with him and Barbara and um Barbara Broccoli, right, who runs the Bond Empire with her half brother, I think, Michael Wilson. That what people they are, amazing people. And um that that's what she asked me, and I said, That's the deal. You you can't not have this. This is perfect. You know, you're going to introduce a whole new audience to exactly. Bond. Exactly. Yeah. It's a no brainer. Any other artist, the Bond franchise is more important than the artist. Billie Eilish, she's bringing it she's to gonna, them. She's going to do it. And uh, well, how about the song? The song will be fine. We'll get the song to work. You know that thing. You'll get it to work because that's what you do. For, that's what I do for a living. I'll get it to work. Don't worry about the song. When it doesn't stop big enough, we'll get it there. Anyway, so, so, oh, hang on, hang on. My computer is, oh, no. It's, I'm about to go off. Oh. Hang on. You're not charging. No, it's this thing that happens. Oh, great. Uh, hang on. Okay. I've just got to get this. I, I'm going, I think Pro Tools has, um, 
probably ground to a halt. That's all right. Uh, so I'm going to have to quit for a second. Hang on. How do I do this? Save. I'll tell you what's happened. I usually finish by dinner and <laughs> my computer's automatically... Oh, it's shut. doing things. <laughs> yeah, they automatically shut down. <laughs> I shouldn't be on. I should be in bed now. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. This is all good. <laughs> uh, okay, let me just load that up again. Uh, hopefully, this will work. Eek. The camera's behaving itself. Though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it. the local recording doesn't really matter. We're fine. Uh, it'll only take a day. Hang on. Okay. You know that thing of 20 million plugins? Yeah. Yep. All because someone can... else bought them and then sent you a session. You got it. Yeah. There, I think. Oh. Yes. It's just about there. What were we talking about? Billy? Yep. Yep. Making the song ah, work. Yeah, Billy. Yeah. Hang on. Initially initializing. What's it doing? Ah, oh, restoring. Yeah. Okay. So if I go there, going to record. There. Uh, hide that. Yeah, we're back on. Excellent. Okay. So Billy, uh, Billy, yeah, Billy. Let me just think where we were. Well, we'd oh, yeah. yeah. So I said it, the record, we, I'm sure we can get the record good. And then uh, it was the case of getting it orchestrated, which was a whole deal because there were three orchestrations and, and it happened over Christmas. And, and I was at, in a place where I just had my laptop and no rig and crap internet. And the whole thing was a bit of a nightmare. But at any rate, I... I can't go through all that because it, it was too convoluted and complex, but we ended up with a result that had to be, everyone was happy with, uh, apart from quite rightly, Daniel Craig, who this being his last Bond movie. Right. Um, you know, he was invested in the song and he didn't think it had a climax, but luckily Billy had sung that high note that she wasn't sure about, but was a bit of a no-brainer. And and I managed to, between me and Phineas, actually, we got the orchestra at that point good and the arrangement. And then uh, she called me, Barbara, and said, um, what did she say? He, Daniel's coming to London and we'd like to hear the mix. Uh, can we do this at Hans's room in Soho and I said yes when's he coming Sunday I said yes of course we can but might I suggest our chances are a million percent better if he comes to my studio because my studio in Wilsdon even though it's in Wilsdon is the best room I've ever heard it's got um uh I don't know if you know Dynaudio M4s mm -hmm. and the, the, the it's the best sounding room I've ever been in like anywhere ever, which is why I took the room over when it came up. It wasn't that I wanted to be in Wilson. It's just the sound of the speakers. It's like you could sit in there and listen all day to it's glorious, that low end that's tight and gets you in the stomach. It's just perfect, the sound, and it's not too harsh. And they are so clear and so loud. It's just brilliant, the sound in there. So he, she spoke to him and he said, okay, I fly in at seven. I can be in Wilsdon at eight in the morning, Sunday. So she, she said, is that okay? I said, of course it, I'll be there. And at, uh, I, I don't know, I got in at six in the morning, you know, to the studio really early and put my mix up in Pro Tools and listened and kept listening and thinking, I got this, this moment, this moment where she goes big, 
I've got to really make that big. So I came up with this ridiculous idea of riding, somehow riding the mix up 8 dB on the downbeat after her note, mm -hmm. which of course didn't work because you, you can't just whack everything up. Eight, I don't know how I ended up at 8 dB. It was just some random amount, you know, just whack the master fader up. And then I figured how to do it with the components. And so she could hit that note and everything would sort of come up around her, but she wouldn't be lost. Right. Were, uh, anyway, so I had a couple of hours to figure it. And then I got the level, the volume for the song. Good, like really good. Not deafening, but a good volume. And when it hit this moment, like the room went ballistic, you know, it's like a the gods. It was fantastic. And I thought, this if he's not going to buy this, we are stuffed. So they arrive, and um, it, it's always, a, I don't know about you, but I, I, not, not st I don't get starstruck, but certainly seeing Daniel Craig stroke James Bond in Willesden. Well, in stroke Geordie. I mean, come on. It's, <laughs> it's just a bit. Yeah. It, anyway, so hello, hi. So glad you could make it. And he's, he's so nice, the man. He, it's, um, it's very nice of you to you know, get up so early. Not a problem, Daniel, whatever. I suggest you sit here and I put him in the hot seat, right? And I'm sort of there and Barbara's there. So we're diagonally with Daniel in the middle. And Barbara says, um, she said something like, Do, is, is there anything you want to say before you play it? Uh, I don't know, bollocks, play. <laughs> Just hit, I just hit play. I leant over and hit the button. And it starts, and he was like with his head down like this, and he listened. And when it hit that moment, which I was just waiting for, uh, you, could, you know, there was this kind of movement, but not too much. The song ended, and you know, with Pro Tools, it just keeps running. Yeah. And I, I wasn't moving, and he wasn't moving, and Barbara was kind of not well. You know, because if he didn't like it, it's back to square one. This is long before COVID, so the film was had to be locked down. Right, it was done, and uh, loads of the themes were. You know, they'd used the theme in the score. It was. Yeah, he had to buy it. Okay, so you didn't say anything, and he then finally goes, "Can you play it again?" Hit the button, play it again. Big moment, the stop, Pro Tools is running, and he looks up and he goes, he looks at me, he goes, I love it. Barbara, years disappear from Barbara, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it was such a moment. And then, so that was good. He's, you know, he goes into what he loved about it and how it now has a big climax and whatever. And um, and then within half an hour, I think, I think it happened really quickly all the wheels turned and it was everywhere. Billie Eilish, you know, does right. the Bond theme. It was amazing how quickly from that, him going, I love it, to everywhere. It was brilliant. Then of course, there was the issue about making it a record because an 8 dB jump into the final note isn't ideal for, you know, that it was funny looking at the waveform getting technical you know yeah. small small bigger big jump it was completely unusable so it had to be kind of reconciled a bit right it worked out though it yeah i think it, it did all right and rob kanowski is also credited for mixing on it did he work on like the tracks with phineas before orchestra and stuff like that or like what any idea <sighs> every idea yeah uh J only asking because no, I know he no. did he did the record with them and whatever. So just ask. No, him. no, it wasn't like that. It the record was done, mixed, everything was finished, and um, it came to this re-leveling, and Phineas saying they wanted to perform it either at the Brits or somewhere, and then the stems ended up with him, and then they ended up with this guy Rob, and I've no idea what he did, and then it ended up saying mixed by him and. 
I couldn't understand what had happened. It was weird, weird moment. Anyway, right. it got resolved. Yeah, yeah, anyway. And it was fine. It's all fine. All good.